Hello everyone. So, uh, the summer break is over. We've got autumn now. We've got more phones to look at, right? So here's the Nokia 6020. If you didn't know the number, it's actually written here with big numbers. So that's a nice thing. I'll just show you the label. It was made in Germany. This is the battery. It takes BL5B. So this is what the phone looks like when it's put together. But I think the more common one was actually in black. I had a roommate back at the uni and he had this particular phone in black. Otherwise, I don't actually remember that many people having this phone, but at least uh, what it looks like from the statistics at GSM Arena, this is pretty popular, or was pretty popular back then. It came out in 2004. That's pretty much the period we're talking here. 2004-2005 all the way to 2006 probably. We can turn it on now I believe. There we go, beautiful. A1. Okay so this particular phone actually comes from Austria Okay, here's a wallpaper with a cheeky ostrich constantly breaking our screen. That's kind of cute. On the left we've got the volume rocker key which is quite generously big and uh, this is just a hole for the lanyard. That's not a speaker. The speaker is on the other side. Extremely big off switch that also serves as a profile selector as you can see. This is the speaker. This is uh, an infrared port, and here's another button. This button is for, yeah, now it only says no network coverage, but it's for push to talk. PTT, you know, the thing that nobody used. Uh, actually, if you used push to talk, please let me know in the comments because I'd like to see actually in which country also, you know, some mention also the country where you're from. Uh, in which country this was actually used. You needed GPRS connectivity in order to have something like a walkie-talkie functionality. And so that's how it worked. It was really weird. So the buttons um, and the joystick, actually. The joystick is actually a button. It's not a real joystick. So that's good because it doesn't break so easily, you know, compared to like Sony Ericsson phones, for instance. Uh, otherwise, the buttons are actually, well, relatively comfortable, but... A little bit stiff you know they're a little bit harder to push um, I'm not saying it's necessarily a bad thing or something you know maybe someone likes to push their buttons real hard and at the bottom the charging port and the so-called pop port now uh, you could connect a data cable of course to this and connect it to a computer you could also use it to connect headphones you know these headphones I can show you that it actually somehow works. See, there's a little icon. But the only thing you could use these headphones for in the combination with this phone is for making phone calls. Because this phone doesn't really have any multimedia functions that would use headphones, not even an FM radio or something like that, which is very strange. We'll get to that. There's a camera. This is just a VJ camera, of course, an ordinary one. And the Nokia logo, and actually the silver elements here, they look pretty nice. And it gives you an idea that this is a little bit more expensive than it really was. So when it comes to the functionality, it's a, it's quite interesting because it takes after, like at least um, uh, from the point of view of like the looks and also the, the way the user interface looks and so on, it takes a lot from its more expensive predecessor, which was the Nokia 6230. From this point of view, it looks like it means business. It's much closer to the likes of like 3220, something like that. Basically, it is the same phone as a 3220, except it doesn't have, you know, the blinking lights on the side. Uh, instead, it has these buttons, it has push to talk, and also the infrared port. That probably also explains the absence of a radio. Let's take a look at the menu. This is what it looks like. You can also have big icons. I will switch to them. And this is what the main menu looks like. And as you can see, 
For those of you who remember what the main menu looked like on the Nokia 6230, this is the exact same thing. I'm actually not sure whether 6220, you know, the predecessor also had the same menu. I think it was slightly different, but this is the exact same one as on the 6230, all the way down to the animations. But on this one, the animations are a little bit slower. The 6230 was an incredibly fast device, actually. It had, you know, a much stronger chipset. So this looks similar, but it's not the same thing. Yeah, so touring all the functions here. I can just go all the way to the end. We've got web. The animation is kind of nice, actually. From the practical point of view, it's probably better to use the so-called grid view, which is just a matrix of icons and looks like this. They're not very colorful, actually. Um, you have eight different color schemes. Orange is very different, as you can see. Yeah, and now all of those icons are orangey as well. Let's go through the functions briefly. So we've got messages. Of course, we've got text messages and uh, MMS messages as well. All in one inbox, actually. We've got something Lieber Kunde. I'm not going to open this one. And Ihre Neuen Care something. Which I don't know what it is. Um, this is interesting. Those are actually some MMS Multimedia messages of some sort. I guess those are templates. I don't know what they're doing in the inbox, actually, where they come from. Not really sure. As I said, it's from somewhere in Austria, uh, which is right next door. So we've got this. That's a video, actually. Yeah. A very static video. And kisses. Play. Oh yeah. <laughs> I kind of miss the times of like these cheesy animations, those GIFs and so on. We would share them uh, over infrared or Bluetooth or something like that. All of these different folders. We've got email. An email client is actually a Java client. So every time you want to fetch new email or just download some incoming email messages that you may have received, you have to do it manually by opening the application. You cannot do it in the background. Uh, and of course, we've got voice messages, info messages, that's self-broadcast and uh, service commands. Again, nobody probably ever used it. This, okay, it also has a message counter. Send messages 150 and receive messages 130. I wonder if uh, someone reset those statistics at one point, because like 150, 130, you know, given the the age of this device, that doesn't seem very many. I would expect more. It also has a support for flash message. So if you don't know, flash message is basically the same as an SMS message, except you can have the text of a message displayed right on the recipient's screen directly, you know. Um, what the benefit of this was, I'm not really sure. I think the network providers use these messages. Um, uh, people, I don't know how popular they were, probably not very much, but there is this one extra symbol and you can make them blink like this. And is there a possibility to have a preview? No. Okay, it also has an insert blink character here. But basically everything that is after this triangle blinks. How are you? Okay. And it's all blinking, but if I don't want the rest of the text to blink, I just insert another, oh yeah, some smileys as well, of course. Um, yeah, this is, how it works. Let's go to the call register. Those are just a list of various calls, incoming, outgoing, uh, of course, the normal stuff. We've got contacts. I'm probably not going to open 
the contacts. Although I think I've altered all the phone numbers in case like anything leaked in the video or something. Uh, it has this, again, a wireless village functionality, which again, I don't think anybody was actually using. Here it's called My Presence and Subscribe Names. So if you were online, you it was some instant messaging, like a predecessor of instant messaging on a phone. Uh, again, it needed to be provided by the network you were subscribed to. So yeah, probably not very many people would use it because I can imagine this would have been pretty expensive. Uh, we have the options here. The memory status actually only gives us percentage. So there you go. We've got voice tags. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm showing one number. That's not a real number, by the way. So that's fine. And we've got caller groups, which is pretty handy because a caller group can have their own ringtone, a group logo, which looks something like this. So when the person calls, this logo is blinking on the screen as well. And then you add group members you know, as much as you wish. So that's pretty fine. So then we've got settings. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in settings. Of course, we've got profiles, six profiles. And inside, it's just the same as setting up your ringtone and maybe other things. And uh, themes. It has some very, very primitive, primitive themes. I can show you one. But what it does is it just changes the color like this. And then you have a screensaver there, a wallpaper and a ringtone, which you probably can't hear now because I've got the volume very low, but that's just a Nokia tune. All right, set, apply this theme but it doesn't really change the theme of a phone as such. It just changes the color accent, which you can see the motor in the background is the same. So this doesn't really support the true themes that came a little bit later. Uh, we've got tone settings here. So that's the usual stuff. The ringtones will be in a separate video, of course. So then we've got personal shortcuts, a right selection key. One can be changed to one of these things. The go to options, that's the uh, left selection key actually, is the is go to and then you can pick which functions you want to have there in the menu. Then I've got display settings, so of course we've got a wallpaper, we can go through the wallpapers there. Select wallpaper like this. So we've got some beach huts. Yeah, this is a GIF again. I'm not sure whether these wallpapers are actually the same as in 6230. I think they recycled some of those graphics. Um, probably. I'm going to have to check it out later on. But I think that a lot of them are actually the same. There's a door. Yeah, some very, very simple wallpapers at this point. Getaway gift. Go fish, of course. Green apples. Well, one of them is not green. Well, uh, greetings, grid. Oh, is that, that's probably a futuristic animation, as you can see. <laughs> All right. Love music. Well, yeah, we love music, but this phone doesn't support music of any kind, so it's Kind of pointless, uh, thank you for reminding us. Luminescence, okay, that's just fish. Moon. I like these kind of like retro futuristic wallpapers in a way, <laughs> that's kind of cool. Reminds me a little bit of these, uh, of those uh, flash animations. Uh, some phones supported them as well, actually. Orange Passion, sure. Reach Out, yeah. Some really artistic elements there. Yeah, that's really interesting. Skiing, of course. Travel. An urban skyline, sure. Uh, yeah, Vodafone. Oh, that's actually a Vodafone's wallpaper. Cool. 
What a fun, what a drop. Wave. That would again be used as a screensaver, I suppose. And yellow flower. Looks nice. 3D stars. Quite a lot of wallpapers there. Uh, I want to use the ostrich again. It's this one. Pick it. Okay. Then I've got the color schemes. And yeah, I, I've shown you green and orange, and now you've seen, also seen gray. So you also have brown, blue. Yeah, that is blue, all right. Violet, red, pink. And many of you we've seen. We don't have any operator logos. That's just a typical Nokia logo there. And the screensaver is the same as a wallpaper, basically. So then we've got time and date settings, of course. And call settings. Those are the boring settings, as usual. So we can just jump through them like this. The same goes with phone settings. Okay, languages, that's always fun. So we've got English, German, French, Italian, Dutch, Spanish, Turkish, and Portuguese. Um, sure. So basically this is Western Europe and Turkish for some reason. Memory status. Yeah, uh, not much <laughs> memory inside there. Just two and a half megabytes since it doesn't even support any music files or anything like that. I guess it's enough, but it has a camera on the other hand. So, hmm. okay, there's automatic key card, self-info display, welcome note, which didn't say anything this time. Operator selection, help text activation. That's the piece of text that pops up. If you wait for about 14 seconds, which is quite a lot actually, but then you get a piece of text that tells you what a particular item in the menu does. And the startup term is what you could hear at the beginning. Connectivity, so yeah, we had infrared as I said, so it can be activated and then you can receive things. You can also send things if they're not copyright protected, GPRS. Actually, Edge is supporting this one, I believe as well. So it's not just GPRS, it's so-called eGPRS, but it, this supports Edge, which is kind of nice. Enhancement settings. Well, yeah, we had the headset connected. Then we've got the configuration settings, and that's just uh, configuration for uh, internet connectivity and so on. And security settings, again, nothing that much interesting, only a pin code, and you could have like your security code and so on. So that's it. And restore factory settings, which is what we would expect. So in the gallery, uh, we've got some images. I'm not going to open those because those are just uh, photos taken with this. We've got video clips. I can probably show some of these, yeah. Just videos made by this phone, which I can show you. Uh, themes are the themes that we already came across. So I can show you one more theme, but it's not really a theme. Again, it just changes the color to red. And then you get a flower and a ringtone. A very fitting ringtone, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Graphics, we've been through. We also have clip art and presence logos. And that's uh, related to other functionalities. And uh, we've got tones and recordings. Are there some recordings? Yes, there are. So we've got a camera here. As I said, it's a VJ camera. We can see some, we can see some options here. Uh, and, uh, image quality. Yeah, it doesn't really show any resolution and stuff like that, but it's 640 by 480. And, well, but yeah, that's basically it. It can also record video, as you will see. I can take, uh, I can take a photo, for example, of this. There you go. What a quality. So I'll put some photos and videos here. If you wanted to record a video, you would go to camera and then 
you would switch to video like this. I believe it's also possible to switch move horizontally. The other option here is the voice recorder, which is just a very simple AMR voice recorder that makes five minute recordings. And it's not very good. And that's your lot when it comes to media. Unfortunately, no radio, as I said, or anything else. It's a little bit poor. I don't know what to tell you about push to talk because it really, of course, doesn't work. And I never used it. And it's just a walkie talkie supported by a network provider because it's based on GPRS and that's it. We've got organizer uh, where there's alarm clock repeated alarm clock at least and we've got calendar which is a fully featured calendar where you can have various different notes there so that's pretty nice and we've got to-do list which uh, let's put there tomatoes because I'm just thinking of tomatoes right now again and yeah, okay, you give it a priority. Tomatoes always have a like, high priority. And there you go. And then you've got your task list and you can mark as done. Then you've got notes. There's just a 3000 character text note. Hello. This is a text note. It's possible to actually insert time and date in there, like this. And smiley, of course, and then, well, that's it. Save it. Wallet. Uh, never used it, but uh, yeah, you can insert some information about your cards into a wallet that is also protected by the code. I'm not entirely sure whether I would trust it, but yeah, normally no one would actually be able to get in, so... I guess it's actually pretty safe. And then you've got synchronization. That's just the synchronization with your computer. And I've got applications, some games, four games, as a matter of fact. Okay, so let's start with this puzzle, which I actually didn't know what this is at all. It plays a very nice music. Let's play a new game and try and figure out what it is. Oh. So is it like... Oh, it's actually moving. Is it like Tetris or something? I don't know. It doesn't work that way. Good. <laughs> Not entirely sure what I'm supposed to do here. Oh, yeah. So somehow if I make some even squares out of these elements on the right with dropping those blocks from the left, they will disappear and I'm not gonna lose or something. Okay, makes sense to me. Beach Rally. Yeah, Beach Rally is again the same game that was also in 6230. I remember that one. Plays nice music. Can I turn the volume up? Oh, I can't. Okay. I don't want to interrupt the music, it's pretty nice. Ah, what the hell. The video is too long anyway. Um, so I can start and... Yeah, it's a bit jerky, but it's... Uh, yeah, this is a 3D rally. I should be faster than this. I don't know if I'm supposed to just push the button repeatedly. It's not super fast though. Not sure if I'm doing something wrong. That's probably normal. Okay. Then we've got Baggerman. That's a very classic game of, of I don't even know how to describe it. It's a it's a board game. Available in many Nokias actually. The oldest one was probably in the 3510i and we had the Nokia 6230i and I've had it as well and that's probably why it disappeared. So I can invite the computer 
for an easy game of Bagaman. It's Bagaman 2, by the way. I don't know why, what was, what was 1. Who starts? The white one starts. I'm the black one. Yeah. <laughs> and I get the smallest numbers possible, so I can move this, actually. I'll kick out the white one. And then he can kick me out like this. It's nice. The last one is bowling. Yeah, of course. Bowling is also one of those classic... Classic games. You can tell how old it is because it makes the beepy sounds instead of like a proper polyphonic melody at the beginning. Oh yeah. If I remember correctly how to play this... No, I don't. Anyway, we've got something in the collection as well. Converted to, okay, that's something I would expect. Uh, it was usually just convert and portfolio. Yeah, you can just convert between different various units. That's not really interesting. And in extras, you have a calculator, countdown timer, and stopwatch. And then we've got web. Web, of course, doesn't work now. As I said, it was eGPRS, or Edge, or something like that. You could install uh, a Java version of Opera Mini, it would be a pretty decent device actually for browsing the web. So that's fine. And the O2SIM, that's the the functions uh, SIM toolkit, as usual. That's it for this phone. So, I can switch it off now. It says A1 presents Vodafone Live, which is interesting, and an Nokia logo. And that's the end of that. So, in conclusion, I think this phone was actually good enough for people who were not game for the crazy Nokia 3220, but also didn't want to spend too much money on a Nokia 6230. So, this was there, right in the middle, looking like a normal phone and just uh, providing the functionality for the money. Um, otherwise, it's not a bad phone. Nokia, of course, knew how to make phones back then. But, uh, of course, um, some, some of those features that were popular in 2004 kind of missing here, like the FM radio or maybe support for uh, MP3, stuff like that. It's not here. Uh, by the way, apart from the 6020, Nokia also made another model called 6021, which was exactly the same thing, but it didn't have this back camera and instead had Bluetooth connectivity. So that way they were addressing uh, demands from some companies who were kind of paranoid uh, when it came to cameras and phones in 2000s. That's why uh, some of the phone manufacturers actually made variants of the phones that uh, didn't have a camera on the back. But um, I think this uh, version is more common. I hope you liked the video. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this phone, whether you had it or not. Also, whether you used push to talk or um, wireless village functionality or whatever this phone had. And yeah, also check out the ringtones, which are in a separate video. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.